Welcome to another Transformers Prime review. This time we're looking at the Deluxe Class First Edition Cliff Jumper. Now this is one that was really sought after just because of the popularity of the short-lived character and the fact that The Rock voices him and that's really exciting. Um, at first I was going to pre pretty much settle on the R.I.D. version but now that I've had it for a little while I've become really disappointed with him and that uh, along with Bulkhead and Starscream the Voyager class ones being reviewed at Toy Fair I thought what the hell I'm just gonna go all out get two cliff jumpers one Japanese one American and I'm gonna be opening this one and putting them on display got two bulkheads and one Starscream so yeah I went a little bit overboard as far as uh, prime figures go but I will be reviewing the American one because they are essentially the same and I like the Japanese packaging so here he is basic first edition pack, uh, box has does have a really cool and glared up picture of clip jumper right there if he was in focus it looks really cool really after being so disappointed with the R.I.D. one I am really looking forward to checking this one out, just especially at watching uh, Vangelis' review of this guy. Got me really excited for him. So, uh, but that's enough looking at the box. Let's uh, actually check out Cliff Jumper's vehicle mode is pretty accurate to what you see in the in the show, and it's more or less the same as the R.I.D. version, just some minor changes. Um, this one window keeps on trying to fall back in. One difference that it does have that I really do like is that it has that Autobot symbol that's actually raised a little bit on the outside. I think that's a nice touch. I do actually like the blue plastic windows as opposed to the clear ones on the R.I.D. version better. Uh, I don't know, it just looks better to me, I guess. The horns are a little bit stiffer. If you can actually see them, there you go. But in overall, the, it, the vehicle mode itself is a bit beefier, just and just a little bit more looks more like a muscle car, and it rolls relatively well. Uh, just have a lot of hard time uh, getting everything lined up since there's so much panel, so many panels that kind of fold in on each other. It's a little bit difficult to get everything lined up correctly, so we so it'll roll just fine. But it will if you try hard enough. It just wasn't such a big deal to me so in silver on here is appropriate there's some on the exhaust here the rims the back although no painted headlight or taillights and the back or the front looks really good with the silver paint if you could actually see it my bad silver paint uh, yeah, it looks really good. Um, there's a bit of an issue with the two-tone paint uh, red in the red here. Uh, especially, this is actually uh, red plastic as opposed to this part, which is clear blue plastic that is painted red. So there's a little bit of issue in the two tones there. But other than that, and just th the fact that everything is kind of tricky to do, it's not bad at all. I do really do like this vehicle mode a lot better than the R1 just for those little added details that it adds. adds. <laughs> Alright, so let's go on to the transformation. First thing I'm going to do is basically just get underneath the car, pull out the, what will become the legs. It's still kind of zoomed in a good bit. Pull out the legs, and these will actually flip out like so and then the entire hood section is gonna go up like this gonna go to back here this um, piece needs to fold out then the whole uh, torso section needs to spin around which is actually it's not too bad to do I've heard a lot of people complain about this actually rotating and getting enough clearance but it's not bad at all. Then I'm going to flip out the feet. It's interesting because this same technique that's used on the legs was used on the arms on the RID version. It's really weird. Fold in these 
two uh, plastic blue pieces and then these will fold in and really need to make sure it's done well on the back so that because the front really doesn't connect all that great but it's really the back connection that really works um, <clears throat> that's the best then going to go to the back here and just try to separate this whole section here like so then I'm going to split these and then rotate if this will work oh that's this, this part rotate this part of the I guess trunk back then just fold out the arms and then fold this piece over on itself there we go and this part is really weird it look looks really good if you can do it just right but you can you kind of kind of separate the chest and kind of pull it at an angle like that just to get the best effect it could have been done a lot better I have to admit and this little piece in the growing area kind of helps separate out a little bit more and rotate up the head separate the arms out a little bit this will peg into actually before I do that I'm going to need to fold these pieces in here and then peg this piece here and probably the best part of this transformation which pretty much sold me on getting this figure the headlights that are now on the back actually rotate up to complete the chest of the robot mode and that is just a genius uh, form of engineering and but it is a little bit finicky especially get them to stay up because it is actually a little bit loose but it's not too bad but may, the effect that it gives is just really cool and it's a lot more honest looking than the than the cheating that the R.I.D. version does. And there you have it. There is Cliff Jumper in robot mode. Uh, to actually correct myself in the transformation, if you push back the back all the way, the headlights will actually uh, fold up more and they'll stay in place. But uh, yeah, I just now noticed that after transforming him. And all I can say is, wow, this is an amazing, amazing figure. It's... it's it's such a good looking and great feeling figure after such a such a huge disappointment with the RID one and we'll get into the comparisons in a little bit but um wow it just looks great but we'll gush over them in a little bit here's the articulation is pretty good actually the it has a really bulky neck and a ball joint in the head so it do, does get some poses but it is, it, in theory, it could rotate all the way around. Well, I guess it's more in theory. It's just kind of awkward. But um, it, that is possible. It has a ball joint in the shoulder. A swivel in the bicep. Really nice double elbow. And his wrists are articulated. They're just kind of stiff. But I kind of like this muscle man look that he, that he naturally has. Let me zoom out a little bit. No waist articulation, uh, waist I think I said, it should be waist, um, but unlike some other people complained about, but I really don't see how they could have actually done it. I much prefer the really honest transformation that it has because it really does look good. Uh, so waist articulation is not a deal killer for me. Uh, ball jointed and swivel in the hip, knee articulation, and a little bit of foot. So he still does have a little bit of stubby legs, but they, but it doesn't look as bad as the regular one because his arms are just perfect. And let me just uh, zoom in on him. I really do like the face detailing. He really is a much darker red in person, but red as a color is actually really hard to photograph and video. 
because it just works that way. And plus, my I have four pretty bright lights on him, so it's kind of saturated a little bit. But he is a really darker red than than what's uh, being portrayed on camera. Looks really nice. I really do like the non uh, angry face that's portrayed here. Like the uh, RAD one has a really stupid looking face, and we'll see uh, more comparisons. Um, I initially did have problems with um, some inaccuracies, especially in uh, shoulders and feet. But the shoulders are actually pretty accurate ones you get into because of that little arc that his shoulders has is actually that his shoulders do have is actually portrayed here with the windows and the black paint. So kudos there. And uh, his feet are a little bit on the small side, but it's reasonable. And just the honest transformation is what really sells it to me, and just the bulkiness to his figure. And the coolest thing that the RAD one really needed, he can use the horns, as he calls them. Uh, you kind of transform the arms back. A little bit then you take the hands and fold them in and they'll kind of snap in place and there you go and you can do that to both hands and this is just awesome there's no other way to describe it it's so much better than that rifle co uh, hammer combination that the RID version has and especially with um, these guns, you can get some really cool poses with him. Like, I really like this one. And this, the honest transforma transformation, the guns, and just the overall look of this is just makes this figure so much better than, than the RID one, which I'll get to. We'll compare the two in just a second after I put his hands back. So let's stand them up. So here's the first edition, American version. And you probably already see him in the back. Uh, let's make sure the camera's focused. There we go. And here is the RID one. Yeah, there's a huge difference between the two and it's not good uh, this one just feels and looks see, I, I do like the feet though the feet look appropriately big as opposed to kind of the tiny feet there legs are a little bit more accurate but the rest of it just looks crappy especially when you get into the head he just has that major I don't even know what you'd call it. it. Just looks, he looks like he has special needs. As opposed to this one, he just looks calm, but ready to fight at any moment. Yeah, I mean, no, and even though this one uses a, a real transformation to pull off the same look, and this one's molded to be more accurate, that one actually still looks better surprisingly enough so yeah let's uh, put this guy up so I absolutely think that any version of this figure is worth it it is far better than the RID version even though I got the RID one first I thought he was okay but still disappointed getting this guy in hand just makes me realize how much better this one is than the RID version and uh, if you're a Prime fan, or even a Rock fan, because, you know, he is voiced by The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, I would definitely recommend getting this figure some way, but like all the other Prime figures that I've, uh, first edition figures I've reviewed, the line was cancelled in the US, um, so <laughs> he's not going to be easy or cheap to come by, if you pay him outright. Uh, um, you're not going to pay retail price no matter where you go. If you trade for him, 
you're probably going to have to trade something valuable for it because this is a highly sought after item right now and it, it'll, it'll take some dedication either money or trade wise to get a hold of this figure but if you're a prime fan this is a must have because this one is just it's a such a good demonstration of how they can really do great with one version of the figure and absolutely horrible job in the next version of the figure and um, just a couple months time because it's not like a huge generation gap where they find new technologies to improve on the figure it's just I don't even know how they came up with the decision I don't know why these figures aren't just repackaged for the main, main line I don't know why but it's stupid alright so if you're a prime fan definitely figure out a way to get a hold of this figure because he is so worth it and just for any but not for really just for any transform fan because if you're not a fan of prime you're not really going to care about this this guy but really recommended for any of the new transformer prime fans which i'm a huge enthusiast about now uh, until next time thanks for watching